now. Detonate the reality bomb! I will build a great, great wall. Some alien race to come down and threaten us. Is the singularity near? The truth is out there. The military industrial complex. The seven mountains of the influencers of culture. To be as gods, you know. Change has come to America. Catapult of propaganda. From a secure location on top of the ridge in the heart of the beautiful Missouri Ozarks, this is a view from the bunker. Now, here's Derek Gilbert. Welcome to View from the Bunker. I'm Derek Gilbert. Our guest today is uh, a favorite of us here at Skywatch TV, a favorite of us here at uh, a View from the Bunker, um, because we've gotten to be friends over the last uh, year and a half or thereabouts. And uh, he is um, a gentleman who's got a very unique delivery, produces a lot of video content you can find on YouTube. He's also got them available in uh, DVD format. And um, it's, it's almost at times comes across as stream of consciousness. And yet when you get to the end, you realize that there was a there was a thread all the way through it and the presentation is not like, well, anything else that's out there. And I think that that is a good thing. Um, he's got a new DVD, a new video out. It is uh, the God dimension. And we are honored to welcome back to a view from the bunker, Trey Smith, Trey, welcome Derek. It's an honor to, to sit with you. And I'm here today with my mom. I, Hi Ruth. Like that's actually, <laughs> she, um, uh, which is really to me the biggest, um, honor of all of it is to be able to, yeah, this, this thing took a few months to make. And, um, so today I'm hanging loose with mom and that's, uh, and I'm going to make sure she has a good time today. Well, that's, that's a good thing. I, I try to get out and see my mom once, uh, at, at least once a week. She's up in Marionville, which is not far from where we're at here. So, uh, um, we, we get a chance to see each other on, on a weekly basis. I get to, you know, vacuum her floors and stuff. My back's younger than hers is. So I guess that's fair. It, it, Derek. <laughs> Derek, isn't that a that, that's such a neat thing though? Because and I'm glad you, you talk about that sometimes when we get together. You talk about um, about your your mom. You know, um, if there was one thing in the making of this movie, mm -hmm. um, Derek, you know, this thing actually changed me. In fact, mom over there can attest to that because she comes in and out and she yells at me for things and she <laughs> that's what moms do well and i and i love you know i would miss it so much and that's what i would t and and i began to really but it, but it's it's because it's because of their their um the the the, the goals that they set in front of us and, and their encouragement and sometimes their chastisement that we actually make anything of ourselves they in this life love you so yeah. much yeah. that you just uh i'll tell you um that's why I dedicated I'm, my last book to my mom. You'll notice that. Are the, you kidding? Uh, I'm well, sitting. Which, this, well, this, 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 one? this one's dedicated to my dad. I'm holding uh, a copy of the day the Earth stands still. And by the way, these look hot as can be. The Jeffrey the, Martis is our secret weapon. He is the the, uh, the artist who does the covers for Defender Publishing. Um, so yeah, that one and uh, this cover here for Unraveling the Multiverse, the Great Inception covers, all of the great covers from Defender Publishing over the last year and a half. Jeffrey's done amazing. But you're you're again you you've got almost a signature style in, in your videos. These, and your these are nice. So. I don't I don't mean to cut in on Derek. These no, no. Books are nice, and people need to subscribe. In fact, my mother reads, and she will attest to this. She loves the Skywatch, and she she does. She reads Sharon's, but she'll be in there, and she puts tabs and things in them. <laughs> she she loves this stuff, and you're right. They do these look. I tell you, uh, the people, I don't know where they do books anymore, where the important people are supposed to be in New York, but they would be jealous of these. Now, we, we've they told Jeffrey phone. multiple times that his covers look as good as anything on the shelf at uh, Books a Million, Barnes and & Noble they, they or whatever. Better. This um, it looks yeah. better. I love this thing that you did here with Josh Peck uh, uh, that, you, that you both did. Uh, at, at the, um, I mean, this thing is beautiful. Uh, I've got one of these, and I'm going to read it. Um, it's well, yeah. It's a little different take on the UFO phenomenon. So, uh, but we we want to talk about your stuff here and what what you've been doing, um, because uh, I'll say again, your, your style is really unique and different. I mean, we we're, we're talking before we recorded here about Skywatch TV, and the, you know, we're on some national networks and stuff, and we're adding a few. But a lot of the programming on these these Christian television um, um, networks. Um, follow a very similar format where you've got a guy at a podium or a woman at a podium or on a stage and they're standing up in front and they're, they're, they're preaching and teaching. And sometimes with 
Uh, a lot of volume, sometimes a little less volume, but it's basically the same sort of format. Skywatch yeah. TV is a little different. We're more like uh, our friends at Prophecy Watchers, where you get a couple well, people a you sit and you interview. And um, but your presentation is is often now. Of course, your 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 uh, Holy Land video is a little different, where you were out in Israel. But uh, this this kind of brings you back into the uh, your home studio. It's basically you in front of a monitor commenting on things that's really what it is actually but but it's so different from that standard you know preacher in front of the audience shouting you know can i get a witness uh which okay there's a place for that and i i don't i don't begrudge I, I don't deny that i don't begrudge that and and boy i wish i could do that for more than 15 minutes without losing my voice but your style i think appeals to a lot of people who are turned off by that and frankly if the whole world were you know, in love with that style of preaching or preaching period, there wouldn't be a need for, you know, people to preach to folks who aren't already in the choir. And so that's why we really appreciate what you're doing. So that, some of that, I'll tell you this, Derek, and, and yeah, no, it's a neat thing. And you're going to go through the letters and I'm a, I'm a weird dude. I thought I was just a weird dude, in front of the, <laughs> but, but people looked at it and I don't know. My mother says that I am. Um, and, and you know what? And, and I, there's a weird dude, what's he doing? Um, but I'll tell you, this thing was just uplifting. And speaking of those guys and those podiums, I, you know, um, uh, at night, sometimes I'll listen to some of these guys because that's what I came from mm -hmm. is her, uh, mom's, uh, dad was an assemblies of God past. He, okay he would preach the point his voice would go out mm -hmm. and um, he had to stop for a year one time because the voice had, um, yeah, had gone you, out. When you got nodes, you can't do anything with it. You just let it rest and heal up. I, well, I'll, Derek, um, uh, in fact, the other night I was sitting and I was listening. She had uh, put some of these old sermons on this and Kind of what this was, and also things that, that you and Sharon, especially here, Scott and Josh, go through or have been kind of tracking this this trail of darkness and where it came from. Yeah. And yeah. proving that God is uh is real. In the midst of that, um man, this was just to lift people up. Mm. And I every day I would sit, I would just I would uh, on the days that the recording stuff went well, I would have gone before the Lord. And there were points I'd get to maybe noon or late in the day. And I'd say, you know, I just have to go. But because I would look at the screen, I would say, I don't even know what I'm supposed to um, be stating. Or you might know what you're supposed to say, but you can't get it to come out right. Yeah, or it yeah, comes yeah. Out and for me, that happens in the writing process. So right now I'm in the middle of writing the next book and I'm trying to boil down uh, a lot of scholarly research on uh, the ancient Mesopotamian rituals for the dead, their dead ancestors. You've and, talked and, about this yeah. for some time. Actually, yeah. it's a powerful, it's a, it's a powerful, th th Derek, there's probably yeah. nobody. One of the things that I've really enjoyed um, ab about the friendship with you is that of people that are speakers, and there's a lot of great guys, um, but you really, um, I mean, these details fascinate you about the, the um, like the back of your hand. You know, these sites about Jericho, the gods, the gods' names, and who the gods' kids were. <laughs> <laughs> I just need to put more charts in the next book, so I've been told. Uh, but your your work on, on this one, The God Dimension, the new DVD, uh, you've you got a, a, a slug line on top here. The future is written in advance, all of it. How, how do you explore that theme in uh, The God Dimension? Okay, so what you're, what you're looking at on the cover there is, um, th this says yod heh vav -He. So okay. this is the name of God. The Tetragrammaton, yeah. Yes, and, mm -hmm. we, and, and, so, and that vav right there is big because we're going to, uh, we focus a lot in the video mm -hmm. on that. That's the number for man. Right. Six. That's also the number uh, for the, uh, the, the Vav is the symbol for the pegs, the silver uh, pegs that held the tabernacle in place, God's inhabitation mm -hmm. on earth. Uh, and also the nails in Jesus's hands mm -hmm. and one in the feet. Mm -hmm. So there would have been three Vav, six, six, six. Hmm. Hmm. Um, now, the rabbis, one of the things, here's a neat thing. Here's a neat thing, Derek.
here that we'll we'll do right here on this show that's kind of neat. In the so what the rabbis believe, and we're looking at a at a big vav here. A mm-hmm. vav, each letter in the Hebrew alphabet represents a number. So they're pictographic letters that you're looking at. So they have a um, uh, the little pictures, and they kind of tell their own little stories. Uh, now, the Vav is the six letter, and it represents the number six or the number of man. So uh, that's what it represents. Now, what the okay. rabbis believe is that, uh, that that letter connects heaven to earth. They believe that because of the tabernacle, because this was used for the pegs to hold God's inhabitation on earth. But what the rabbis also believe is that the first time a letter's used in the Torah, that it should give you some idea of what that letter means, what it is, what its function is. Well, in Genesis, the, that first sentence of Genesis, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And that's the most quoted sentence in all of human literature. Hmm. That's what that is. Hmm. That volve, if you count in one, two, three, four, five, and you get to the sixth word, the first time the volve is used in the Torah is on the start of the six word in. And guess what that six word is? Well, that's the word we've been translating as and the. That's literally the and the connecting heaven, Shamaim, and the earth. Is what that vav is, mm. and, and so, and, the, and one of the things that that I began to learn and, and doing it just became such a fun thing where you, I, I would get to a point where you're saying to yourself, you don't know what to put in because there's so much cool stuff. What do I choose? Right, right. To to put in there because the more you look at those letters and that language, not in any other book. And as much as I love Derek's books, <laughs> you're you're not going to find the same effect on on any other book on earth would not as, presume to say so no uh uh-uh. uh as you're yeah. going to find in that in that torah so it has its surface level meaning and it literally means what what it says in those te- well literally and um but it has deeper meanings within the text each and each letter of that hebrew alphabet each little letter guy and there're 22 of them each one of them points to the Messiah, some more than others, but, uh, but they all are pointing. They're all pointing to Jesus, all of them, every letter from the Aleph, the first letter, which is in three parts, the Aleph, that right, it starts everything, but it's the silent letter all the way to the top, which is, <coughs> excuse me, it's the last letter and it's a cross. The top, the last letter of that alphabet is Across, I, I don't even know how the Jews possibly don't know Jesus is the Messiah. Yeah, I mean you've got to be the uh, uh, you've got to ignore an awful lot of stuff. It's 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 difficult. It's if we're looking at it from our perspective, and, and uh, you know that's one reason a, a gentleman has become a, a good friend of ours uh, over the past um, uh, year, uh, Rabbi Zev Parat, who mm-hmm. was raised in a family of um, uh, ultra orthodox. Uh, rabbis. Uh, the, in fact, the little village in which he was raised is all um, rabbis. Uh, grandfather, member of the, uh, the reconstituted Sanhedrin. Although he'll, he will tell you that they, they didn't really reconstitute the Sanhedrin. There's always been a Sanhedrin, he says. Um, he's got a, a perspective that that we don't share because, you know, we were always raised in a Christian culture, raised, you know, attending church as as you were hearing pastors preach. So for us, it's, it's just a whole worldview thing. It's hard for us to comprehend um, how difficult it, it would have been for the Jews then or or now to to say yeah everything that we've been taught um, is is th- there's been stuff that we've not been taught um, or what we have been taught doesn't align with the evidence it, it's really difficult to make that kind of a stretch the closest I can come to it is some friends we had in St Louis who were um, out of the Amish community in northeast Missouri up around um, uh, Hannibal, uh, not quite Hannibal, but uh, up that direction. And um, the grandfather of this family had uh, gotten uh, hurt working out in the fields one day. And so he was laid up for a few weeks in, uh, in, in bed, couldn't, couldn't get out, couldn't work. So all he had to read was his Bible. And when he started reading the Bible and he saw, hey, all of these rules that we're living under um, aren't in here. So now I have to make a decision. Um, but 
getting to that point where you're actually reading the 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 evidence and, and taking it at face value and setting aside tradition. Mm-hmm. You know, and you can almost hear. That's interesting, uh, Eric. I, it's um, it, you can you can almost hear. You know, was it uh, Z- Zero Mustel uh, in the in the movie version of uh, Fiddler on the Roof? You know, singing tradition, um, and not to make light of it, but it's it's really difficult to turn your back on not just what you've been taught, but because by extension, everyone else around you who looks at your decision and thinks you're rejecting them and saying without saying so. What you believe is wrong, and you're stupid, even mm. though that's not what you're saying. But that's so. Th- this 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 family wound up in St. Louis because they had been shunned. Mm. Friends, family members, they basically banished from the community, more or less. And and I would imagine that for a lot of Jews, you know, who's going to be the first one to cross that line? It had to be an act of incredible bravery for Peter, James, John, Andrew, Nathaniel, you know, the the first apostles to say, yeah, yeah, this is the guy. Yeah, because that's yeah. not what the uh, that's not what the rabbis were teaching them. It's not what the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the no, Sanhedrin, were teaching them. So it was not. The, yeah, uh, uh, those were the guys that put Jesus on the cross. Yeah, uh, and the um, but and and to look at the the Torah though, and, and to come out with this, as you say, you know, it, it, it's, it it's admittedly there. it's all in there, but yeah. you know, w- without having that. By the time of what? By the time Jesus arrived on the scene, they already had fifteen hundred years of tradition. Behind what? their, their Torah and, and, and tr- filtering the Word of God for them in, in the same way that some denominations will try to filter the Word of God for people in the pews on Sunday morning. Well, we we just, you know Derek, from my perspective, I just love them. And yeah, Amen. We're and so um, uh, and whoever who I mean, you know what it is? It's just an encouraging thing. And I and I had thought of particularly with this one. Um, here's a, here's a story, uh, uh, that's kind of a neat one. So I didn't really have a title for it. I I was a little actually nervous about titling it this because that's the net, that's the, to the Jews, it's the, it's the unspeakable name of God right there. Right, right. And, um, uh, and I, and then, but it it just popped in my head, the God dimension. And I I was sitting there looking and kind of trying to muck with some graphics. And this came to my, I mean, I knew it was going to be about something about dimensions and letters and and this kind of thing, but what exactly to call it. So um, I made this initial graphic and I I messaged it through quite a few people. Probably, I believe I messaged it to you. Yeah, you did. Uh Uh-huh. Um, but one of the people that came back, I see you compromised on the colors. You went with both the, uh, the bronze colored and the blue. Well, it's on. The, yeah. I, 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 um, and then there were some people who said, don't put it on there at all. And I would say, why? And they would say, well, because nobody knows what that says. I said, you know, who cares? I, I yeah. mean, look. <laughs> and for us English speakers, by the way, when we're looking at this at Yad, Hey, Vav, Hey, it's, uh, it's like, well, wait a minute. The two symbols that are the same are, are not in the right position. It's because Hebrew goes right to left. Just right. Remember right. that. I had, I had to stop and think about that for a minute too. But uh, it's, it's, but it, it's, it's wonderful. Let, let me, let me ask you this, because again, I, I made mention of the, um, the Holy Land video that you did before you uh, mm-hmm. had the opportunity to tour Israel uh, and uh, a few sites with um, the, uh, the the well-known rock and roll singer uh, Rick Derringer, who is a, very a, a convicted nice believer. Yeah, um, and you know what's you, okay? So, but, and I don't mean to cut you off, but Casper, whose book is in there in the other room, Casper McLeod. Yeah, they're going to do a show together in New York. Oh, I just had heard about this, and in fact, I, I will tell you. Look, man, I've got this old broken phone here. Let me see if I can find. Um, okay, so Ken Monet, who's the guy that is um, Rick's uh, manager and, and also drummer, this guy bought the property. His, his dream is to have, he calls it a God stock, but you call it whatever you like. He bought the original property. For the Woodstock. Really? Yeah. The, the farm. I think it's like 37 acres. And we were seeing 37 everywhere. But the address for it is Max 333 farm, huh? oh, wow. Gabriel Road in Bethel, New York. <laughs> I'm not making it up, man. That's, wow. that's true. That's true. <laughs> so on May 5th, yeah, yeah, I, you know, I mean, you, you can't even make stuff like that. I know, I know. Um, so, yeah, and I just happened to think because there were some books of Casper's and now I said, well, that's odd. I'm here at Skywatch, and I, you guys carry it. 
And um, beautiful, beautiful. And Casper's books are, man, it's awesome. There's nobody that knows more about the Shroud. But he's going to be doing a show with Rick Derringer in New York in May or something. And 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 that guy has got a story, just like you and Sharon have. Because yeah. I asked you the other day, do you see 111 on your clocks? So I'm working on this video, and there's numbers and stuff everywhere. You'll start right. looking crazy right. after a minute. Yeah. Um, but then you realize everybody else is crazy too, because, <laughs> um, there, um, when I talk to Donnie, we, well, let me come back to Donnie for a second. So I'm, I'm emailing this message through that's got this God dimension on it. And she, and, and she, um, uh, she replied and she said, um, Trey, we, we need to talk. And she said, my grandmother was in the Six Day War. She was in Jerusalem during wow. the Six Day War, and she died exactly fifty years uh, from that war in the Jubilee year, and she died exactly fifty days after my father, Kim Clement. I, I and I believe that's Kim's mom mm. that she's talking about, mm-hmm. her grandmother. She said, but before before she died, she called us all in, and she said. Um, I need to to tell you something. She said, I saw Kim and he was in a doorway of light. And he said, you can come on up here. It's okay. I'm already here. And she said, Kim, where are you? And he said, I'm in the God dimension. And I I have no idea what that means, but that was so comforting when she, when she told, I mean, it was just, you know, and you really, and I'm planning to go see those ladies here, and I'm going to hang out with mom. Mm-hmm. I'm probably going to, I'm going to go up there to, uh, there, there's a neat lady I'd like to go see in Colorado. And then after that, I'm going to, I want to go up there and see those ladies. They have been, um, Kim, it was, um, I, I just, um, I don't, I don't have enough words of honor to speak for Kim Clement. And I, now, did you know, Derek? That when, uh, okay, so Donnie, the Lord had told her several weeks before, you need to go spend time with your father. She didn't know why, mm-hmm. and she she went to go spend time with him. Now they found Kim three three days, but he had three strokes. Three, and the last one was the large one. Mm-hmm. He would live long enough to just see Donald Trump become president. And he died just a few weeks after that. They found and of him. course, he prophesied that that was going to happen long before it happened. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh all in interesting years. Yeah, look yeah. at the look at the years and dates. Everything will either have a seven or a fourteen or. Huh. A, it, I mean, it, it's 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 you begin to just see this whole different picture emerge. Yeah, they found Kim crying. And this was three days, three days before his third stroke, the last one. And they found him, she said, and she said he was just balled up and he was just crying. And they said, Kim, what's wrong? What's wrong? And he wouldn't tell anybody, but he wrote on a note that in three days, and he gave the date, he put the date on here, uh, that, he would, that the Lord had said he would not speak again. That's what that note says. Mm-hmm. And, um, um, I, you know, and I'll tell you that, um, that, there's a tape actually of his last den that's up on the internet. And I have watched it. If you haven't watched that and you're listening to the show, um, th- those are the, the la- he didn't give much prophecy. What he mainly did was sing was because, because mm-hmm. that's what Kim loved to do. He loved to sing to the Lord. Just David loved to sing to the Lord. Mm-hmm. But what prophecy he did give, and it's probably about an hour in, you probably got to get about halfway through that tape. Actually, you know what? That tape is an hour and 11 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? You get about halfway through there, and he will give a prophesy, and he'll 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 bring you to t- tr- Kim Clement will take you out with tears. Hmm. He made his last one a good one. Um, but yeah, man, this is a pretty. I mean, this is more than a cool thing for me. Hmm. It's it it's Derek. I've had kind of a rough. It's not been a rough couple of years. What it's um, in some, there was a lot of, uh, joy that I had making this that I hadn't had, like, you know, I, I enjoyed the Trump thing, and mm-hmm. I, but there was honestly kind of a lot of stress about that because you don't, you don't know and people are asking and people are biting their fingernails and some people are real mad at you and some people, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like fending and, um, 
this had a, just a great deal of peace to it to make. And I think people people need that. Yeah. I you know, I, well, especially in these times we're we're looking at the world around us, we're looking at the uh the 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 I think vitriol is the best word. Um the 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 acid being thrown back and forth by Democrats and Republicans here in in this the last 2 years um over Donald Trump getting into the White House. It it, it is easy for us even as Christians to get all caught up in that and to be at, to get our our guts twisted into knots over what's going on. Uh, forgetting that God has got all of this in control, that he's seen the end from the beginning. He knows that all of this and knew all of this, and you don't think he's got it in control. Why, 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 would, why would that you know, even cross your mind? And if he's got it in control, then why are we stressing ourselves about it? Why are we so angry? Well, yeah, we can work up a good righteous anger against sin and, and unrighteousness in the world, but a lot, let, let's look at it this way. A lot of these people whether they're Jews or, or Muslims, or and I don't mean to cast any aspersions on any particular religion, but Buddhists, Hindus, etc. They are, and this is something that really came to me during the uh, writing of The Great Inception, given that these small g gods, these rebellious fallen angels are real, and that they have been putting out disinformation, misinformation, lies, half-truths since the garden in order to deceive mankind into falling away from the truth. They don't care what we believe as long as it's not the one thing that's true. So these people are all victims of a massive disinformation campaign, a psyop that goes all the way back to Eden. And so, you know, these people are victims. And yes, the true believers, the the violent Islamist groups like the Islamic State will take that and wield the sword against uh, anyone who's not in, in their in their cult. Uh, but you've also got violent Hindus who are doing this. There, are, there, there are apocalyptic prophecies in Buddhism that will make uh, the Book of Revelation look tame. So you know the, the enemy doesn't care what we believe, and they are more than delighted to have us killing each other while we're doing it. And we as Christians yeah. just have to remember that they, uh, many of the people who are following those religions, are just dupes, unwitting dupes of these. Um, principalities and powers that have aligned themselves, that have rebelled against their creator. And, and so it is tragic. It is sad. We can get, we can be angry, but let's be angry at the right things here. Let's be angry at these entities that are creating an ocean of blood, a sea of skulls from uh, across human history by luring people into these false religions. Yeah, they're yeah. the ones at whom we should be angry, and I think that's why they're getting desperate. When you think about Paul and the letter that he wrote to the church at Corinth, do you not know that you shall judge angels? So what did that mean? There is a day coming when we, I think, and you know, I'm, I, I would want to defer to a, a, an actual scholar like a Dr. Heiser or somebody, or Tom Horn or uh, somebody of that uh, caliber, but I believe that... When you read the New Testament, you see that sonship language, that family language that's in there. The parable of the prodigal son is one picture that comes to mind when I think about this and how we are restored to the family and welcome back. But also the, um, the parable of the, the absentee owner of the vineyard, the king who owns this vineyard. Yeah. He's got the tenant farmers who, uh, you know, the managers come to... Uh, and the the uh, the tenants kill him, and they kill. And finally, the king sends his son, and surely they'll listen to my son. And they kill him too, thinking, "Hey, if we kill him, we'll get to take over this this great vineyard, and it'll be all ours." I used to think that was about, you know, the the, the tenant farmers who were who were rebelling against the authority of the king were us. It's not. It's these small g gods. It's Baal, Molech, Chemosh, Asherah, Astaroth, Astart, Ishtar, whatever. It's them, and they thought. By killing the son, they would inherit the earth. And Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 2, verses 6 through 8, if they had understood what was going on, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. They didn't understand what Jesus' mission was. And they, didn't, they, they misunderstood that. And so they, they sacrificed him, killed him, thinking, yes, okay, now the earth is ours. Well, <laughs> and this is a great reversal. This is going to go into my next book, uh, Third Day. Jesus comes back after being down in the abyss, talking to the those entities that are in chains, bound in chains in utter darkness until the day of the judgment. Um, <laughs> this is only temporary. I'm getting out in three days. Uh, reversing a ritual that I'll you know show from Amorite Canaanite texts that uh, was 
a necromancy ritual that the, the, they were working these pagan nations for, for hundreds, maybe thousands of years. I think a day is coming when we are restored to God's family, restored to the position Adam and Eve lost when they rebelled in the garden on God's holy mountain, Zion. His mount of assembly, humanity will become part of the divine assembly again, the divine council. Um, and when that happens, and my God, Gosh, Hebrews 2 is so powerful when you think about this because there's a, a passage, and I don't have a Bible in front of me, but uh, Hebrews 2, it's around verse 10 or 12, somewhere in there, where he says, Behold, I and the children you gave me. And then uh, Jesus, uh, the, the verse says, will sing, your, sing, of your, sing your praise to my brothers. And... Uh, Meaning that that when that day comes where we are restored to that position, we're going to be present. I mean, talk about Kim Clement and his his wanting to sing praise of God. Imagine Jesus Christ Himself singing the praise of God to all of us. Yeah, we will well, be there for that. Yeah. Well. And then these angels who, uh, you know, for whatever reason, God chose. And, and the first two chapters of Hebrews, I recommend everybody read those and read this with this understanding that that. God created mankind a little lower than the angels, but the angels were created to serve us, to be uh, our helpers and our servants. And there are some who the Bible shows clearly rebelled. And that's why I think when we judge angels, we will be judging those you know, that, that, that class of entity. And there are th- some who, um, it, when the judgment is passed, will be joining the devil and his minions in the lake of fire. So it's... Um, yeah, it's an it's incredible thing when you think about that, and, and I wish I had a Bible in front of me because it's it, it, I'm not doing it justice now trying to call it up from memory, but uh, those verses, those passages, when you read those with that understanding that that is our destiny someday. We are the prodigal son who's going to be welcomed home, and the marriage supper of the lamb is when he kills the fatted calf and, and welcomes us. And the older brother who's kind of upset about it, it's kind of like the angel's like, well, what about us? You know, we've been here the whole time serving you faithfully. It's like, hey, yes, yes, and you're, yeah, no worries. <laughs> You're, you're still my son, but they've, they've come home. Yeah. Love to come home. Yeah. And, um, yeah, in Hebrews 2, where it talks about Jesus singing his praise to my brothers, when we are back in that, that, that mount of assembly as part of the divine council. Wow. Yeah. And there's a way you might interpret it, and I don't know if this is correct or not, but it, it brought me to tears thinking about it once, um, well, more than once, actually, that it could be that the... Uh, the brothers that Jesus is referring to in Hebrews 2 are the angels of the divine council and that those he's singing the praises of are the children that he is bringing to the Mount of Assembly. In other words, singing our praises to the angels who remain faithful. Now, I'm not going to swear that that's exactly what that means, but if that is the way of interpreting it, that's even more powerful when you think about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, the, the, it, I mean, know, it gives me chills. Par- those parables of... Are, are we... Um, the, well, the, the the parables. One of the th- okay. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to take over the interview. <laughs> the, no, 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 no. What you actually what you said was, was this is these are the kind of conversations we were blessed to have when we get together and just you know sit down over a cold one or something. Uh, we just happen to have the microphones on this time. So yeah, no. It, well, that's actually true. This is I that is actually true. You 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 were saying the prodigal son. This is, now she doesn't have them anymore. There's, um, but she, my mom over here, she had, um, what year did you have cancer? Was it 91? It was 91. 1990. 1990. Okay. okay. And she, and you had, how big was that a cancer? It was a, it was a big one. It was 12 pounds. It was a, a 12 pound million. tumor. 12 pounds. Yeah. And they gave, wow. they wow. gave her a few months to I live. Hmm. They gave her a few months to live, and she, um, they told her three months. She's still here. Um, Praise God. A fork to eat. Go ahead. You wouldn't lift a fork to eat it. She Okay, so she said she. They, they, the doctors told her that she was going to die. She had three months to live. She wouldn't be able to lift a fork. They were going to do this chemo stuff. She stopped going to the chemo because she said it didn't work. Well, she said, I don't know what she said, but she covered the house with faith scriptures. Um, And um, the cancer went away. Hmm. Um, She um, is 
still sitting here. Hmm. It, she know, pulled her money out of Enron too before it. Cl- she was working at oh, Enron, and the oh. Lord told her to take a. She 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 because I remember Dwayne and other people, or you know whoever, but we got family members that you know are good. You know, claim to be good for financial stuff. And no, 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 you don't pull it. Out. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I remember she very well when that when that when that hit because that hit just before nine eleven and uh, Enron collapsing in nine eleven. I was in the steel pipe business, and our business just fell off a cliff. Mom was Thanks to shopping yeah. while people were jumping off of windows and shutting, shooting themselves in the head. Wow, yeah, that was. Uh... But you know, See? it's but it, but it's 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 interesting because you know sometimes God will will hear those prayers and, and choose for whatever reason not to respond. My my father back in two thousand five suddenly uh, in the spring of 05 began to get uh, uh, sick and we couldn't doctors couldn't figure out what was going on and he was just he was getting dizzy all the time. He was losing his balance. He finally had to start walking with a cane to support himself and. Uh, he was growing weaker and um, dizzier, couldn't eat because of the dizziness. Um, and doctors never did figure out what, it, they, they didn't figure out what was going on with him until uh, about uh, two days before he, he passed away in August of 2005. And, you know, I had the opportunity to spend a couple of weeks with him there in his last uh, days. And, you know, dad was an engineer by, by training and, and for his whole life. So very linear thinker, you know, point A, point B, you know, <laughs> Closest, yeah. you know, closest way to easiest route to, to solving a problem is a straight line. Um, you know, I went into a sales career. I realized with some people, the, the closest, the easiest way to solve a problem is to kind of go around and circle around from behind. But anyway, um, dad was um, a, a guy who read. And that's why I d- dedicated the day the earth stands still uh, to dad, because dealing with the UFO phenomenon, and he had read chariots of the gods and all of that stuff the ancient alien stuff back in the 70s before yeah. it you know when it was really hot and rod serling was making movies about what you know this great idea and all that um but dad with his engineer's mind thought about it and then thought you know what are the odds that christianity would have survived past the end of the first century with the romans and the sanhedrin trying to persecute these guys and would these guys really have died if it was a lie if jesus was just an astronaut from another world and why would he have lied about that if that was the case why did he you know so dad said, you know, believing Von Daniken takes more faith than believing the Gospels. And so he rejected yeah. all of that stuff. I inherited all those books, which, um, you know, sadly I should have burned. Instead, I gave them to some used bookstore, and they're probably corrupting someone else's mind these days. But uh, anyway, um, but even though we, we prayed, this, but we, 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 we prayed, was... you know, as, as hard as, as I knew how back in 2005, and yet the Lord chose not to heal dad. For did he saying. know the Lord? He did. Okay. He did. And he made it. And so it was, it was, uh, there was a piece about that. Um, having had the opportunity to talk with him about all of that before he, he passed and knowing, he said, you know, if I, if, if I recovered, that's great. If not, I'm ready. I've had a good life and I know where I'm going. So, uh, it, you know, I didn't cry much when he passed because I knew, and, and a lot of people were surprised by that. Well, didn't you, you know, was everything okay between you? He said, yeah, it's just, I know where he is, you know? And, um, yeah. Like, yeah. like, like Job, he said, uh, I know my Redeemer lives and I will see him on the last day. Of course, Dad got there first. He, you know, but it, it was, it was kind of odd when you think, yeah. what they finally de- 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 um, figured out what it was. They finally um, identified the virus that had taken up residence in his, in his brain, basically caused a lesion in his brain. And it's a virus that 85% of American adults have been exposed to, but in most of us, it stays dormant. It's called the JC virus. Wow. Now, that's the initials of the guy who discovered it, but still, it is kind of weird. Um, it normally only gets aggressive in people with full-blown AIDS. And Dad didn't have AIDS. He would not have ever been exposed to AIDS or HIV. Um, so they couldn't figure out what, what was causing this. And uh, there's no cure because the number of people who, who die from this particular virus in the course of a year are in, number in the hundreds. There's no money to be made in trying to come up with a cure for it. So... Um, yeah. But he, but he knew where he was going, and he knew with, with his engineer's mind. See, and 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 now uh, let me try to close a circle and bring this back to your work. Um, again, Dad approached this with a very logical engineer's perspective. You know, he was trained as a draftsman. Yeah. Um, but he was a, a smarter than I realized when I was a kid. Because when you're a kid, your dad is you know stupid. <laughs> and now that I'm an adult, I realize he keeps getting smarter, even yeah, though he's he been gone for 12 years. Um, but as an engineer, like I said, he had very linear thinking. This is the problem. Let's fix this. Let's solve this. You t- do this and tie this together, and you weld that there, and this, that, and, and that's how you fix a problem. Um, you 
are, are making connections that an engineer probably would not make when it comes to uh, the symbolism, the yad he vav he, and the num- numeral- numerology involved in, in the Hebrew language and things like that. Um, and, um, and and so there, there's, there's a different audience being reached by that. So it, it, what, what, how did your trip to Israel with Rick Derringer inspire or open your eyes to some of the things in the new video? I, you know, I'm not sure. I, um, uh, but I'm very glad that, that I went with him there. <coughs> and uh, I think he was supposed to go. I, th- I think it was that the Lord, it was kind of an unusual um, thing that was put together there. And um, it, it would have been very different in, in Israel had he not been there. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, it was just kind of like going with a friend, to be honest, Derek. What this thing, what this thing is that I'm holding, it's just, you know, it's just a, it's, it's just a walk. Well, right let me let me ask you this, um, at, and I know that uh, you know to avoid taking up the rest of the afternoon you could be spending with your mom. Um, what do you hope viewers get when uh, out of this when they watch the God Dimension? I I hope I, well even out off of the thing that's on YouTube, and I'll tell you, there's no, let me tell you this real clearly. There's nothing in this disc that the thing that I, you're going to just learn a bunch of cool stuff. If there were one message in this thing. Uh, It would be that Jesus, just like that parable that Derek was talking about, the parable of the the prodigal son, um, that the Lord is just calling us out, all out of the mud pits. He's just calling us out. And and a bunch of cool looking, and listen to me on this. Um, There's a lot of cool stuff in the 30-minute thing that's on. If the 30-minute thing doesn't convince you Jesus is real, another hour and a half ain't going to help you. You just begin, whoever you are, to go before the Lord. doesn't matter where you're at, what you've done. If you say, I'm just in the middle of it and everything's falling apart. You know what's funny about that is that when you're looking at Revelation chapter 2 and 3, where Jesus is talking to those churches, there are five of them that he gets on to. And the ones that thought they were doing really good were the ones that were not doing. Mm-hmm. And the ones that thought they were doing really, really poorly were actually the ones that were doing. No, you're doing all right. So this is something to uplift you. Uh, but but more than that, you just you just ask the Lord. One one of the things I learned to do in the course of making this thing was just to say, Lord, even in my stupidness, even in my idiocy, guide me. Protect me from my stupidity because I've got so, because I've got just plethora of it. Protect me from it. Protect me from myself. Lord Jesus, I ask that your will be done. And me, I just pray for it. And give me joy. And you're supposed to have joy. Wherever you are sitting here, it's fun actually to watch the news anymore because you're watching bad people get scared. It's fun to watch bad people get scared. <laughs> It's a lot of fun to do that. You're yeah, watching yeah. your big old news media try and cover for them, and the, and they're losing at that. Oh, it's embarrassing when you see a State of the Union address where you've actually got a president in the office, and you've got your media. Oh, it was horrible. It was just you know. And then they poll the viewers, and seventy to seventy-five percent come back with a. Fi- a- positive response, a favorable response. It's like, what? Okay. A little bit of a disconnect. You're in wonderful yeah. times and the Lord is going to, on the other side of this thing, no matter what you're going through, the Lord wants, he wants to bless you. And that means far more than, um, he wants to bless you and blessing in God's view is joy. You could have joy while the world burns, but you just have joy, whoever you are listening to this. And I'll tell you, it's an honor to sit here with. Um, um, one of the closest was somebody I go out to eat with here mm-hmm. when I get the chance. Um, and it's an honor that he would even take his time to 
sit here with a weird dude like me that throw, yeah, it's a, throws the arms and stuff everywhere. Yeah, it's a joy. Yeah, Trey, Trey where, where do people find a copy? If they want to get a copy of this or get several copies and share them around, where would they find the God Dimension? Well, they're going to, okay, so I'm going to need you to drive to New Jersey, okay? And I'm going to give you a street address for a guy now. It's kind of a dark looking place, but knock on the door, don't get freaked out. And make, no, go over to godinanutshell.com and make sure you subscribe to all of the Skywatch stuff too. And subscribe right. to my stuff. Yeah. Sometimes some of us say something worth listening to. Well, so. put links in the show notes. And if you're watching the video at uh, youtube.com slash Derek Gilbert, there'll be that, that those notes will be below the video. But if you're watching, uh, you know, it's uh, you know, Spreaker, VFTB.net, wherever, you just check the notes. And I'll have links to uh, Trey's website and also Trey's YouTube channel where you should subscribe. Take what you like and leave the rest. I love you, Derek. All right. Love you, man. Thanks for coming in today. <laughs> Check the notes wherever you're listening or watching this podcast, whether it's vftb.net, spreaker.com, or at the YouTube channel. Or you could be listening at Stitcher, too, for that matter. Uh, or watching the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Derek Gilbert. Check the notes, and you'll find links to Trey's website, The God in a Nutshell Project. Also, links to his uh, YouTube channel, which you sub- should subscribe to. And if you're not subscribed already, why haven't you? So do that and uh, check it out. The new DVD, here's a, you know, if, if You'll notice now, by the way, if you're watching, you're, you're actually seeing a live body in front of the camera. So this is the tag end where I've actually got the camera on. Um, uh, the God Dimension. It's uh, <laughs> reflecting the light. Now, like, this is not a professional video studio. Anyway, um, the new new DVD from Trey Smith, The God Dimension. Find it at his website, The God in a Nutshell Project. Um, we've seen clips from it. Going, looking forward to going home and watching this this uh, weekend. We got a busy year coming up for us at the Skywatch TV and for Sharon and me personally. Uh, Skywatch TV, we are going on three new national networks. Should have called up those national networks so I could give you the exact dates and times, but you'll find all of that at the website, which is skywatchtv.com. Uh, let me bring this up here. I'm kind of vamping as I do this so that uh, we can. Um, give you some accurate information. All along, we have been on the Christian Television Network and on Victory Television Network in uh, Arkansas, Arkansas and around Memphis. But uh, as of the first week of Jan- or February, that is, uh, which this now is, we're adding three new national networks for the weekly Skywatch TV broadcast. Angel One, which is Dish Network Channel 262, Dish Network 262, uh, will be on Sundays at 3.30 p.m. Eastern, 2.30 Central. GEB America, GEB America, which is uh, based out of Tulsa. That's DirecTV channel 368, or I'm sorry, 363. Got to get the progressive lenses adjusted. Wrong viewing distance. Uh, DirecTV 363, they also stream live to Roku and Apple TV. So if you've got Roku or Apple TV, if you add the GEB America channel to your uh, Roku, uh, you can watch us at 6 p.m. Sundays. That's 6 p.m. Eastern Time, UTC minus 5, uh, 5 p.m. Central Time. And the Impact Network, Impact Network, which is DirecTV Channel 380, Dish Network Channel 260. And the Impact Network is also available on cable, Comcast Cable, Spectrum Cable, and they also stream live to Roku and Apple TV. So a bunch of ways to watch the Impact Network. And we will broadcast weekly on Impact at 3.30 p.m. Tuesdays. That's 3.30 Tuesday afternoons. Eastern Time, 2.30 Central, um, 12.30 p.m. Pacific Time on the Impact Network. Again, DirecTV 380, Dish Network 260, and check local listings if you've got Comcast, Spectrum, Cable. Um, But if you've got Roku or Apple TV, well, just add their app to your Apple TV or Roku account. You can watch us that way as well. Complete listings at skywatchtv.com slash channels. Okay? And um, this coming week... The interview is with Justin Fall and Wes Fall, the newest members of the Skywatch TV team. Sharon and I this year will be traveling quite a bit. We've got to mm, see three conferences I know of off the top of my head. One, two, three, possibly a fourth. So, uh, yeah, we'll be traveling a bit. The first one up, of course, is the uh, the uh, mm, Hear the Watchman Conference coming to Dallas March 22nd through the 25th. That's the Hilton DFW Lakes Conference Center uh, along with us, uh, Josh and Christina Peck will be there from Skywatch TV. Bill Salas, Rabbi Zev Parat, Pastor Carl Gallops, L.A. Marzuli, who, as I record this on Friday afternoon, February 2nd, big announcement regarding some DNA testing he's had done on anomalous skulls. So by the time the conference comes around, no doubt L.A. will have something very exciting to share. 
In fact, probably will by the time I finish recording this video, but I don't know what it is just yet. Um, Dr. Michael Lake will be there as well. Casper McLeod, um, Josh Tolley, Mark Taylor, co-author of The Trump Prophecies. What a lineup. That's the Hear the Watchman conference in Dallas, and we can save you $20 off your registration. Use the promo code GILBERT20, GILBERT20 at hearthewatchmen.com. If you can't be in Dallas for the conference, you can still watch it slightly time-shifted. What they do is they record each presentation, they upload it to the web as soon as the presentation is over. And that way they avoid any problems with the video stream being interrupted at the hotel and the conference center. It's smart. You get an HD video stream that should be inter- uninterrupted, and uh, we can save you 20% on the cost. It's only 49 bucks, and you get access to those videos for six months after the conference. It's a great deal, and we can save you 20% off of that by using the promo code GILBERT20. That's GILBERT20. Uh, don't miss our Bible study every week, the uh, Gilbert House Fellowship. You'll find that at gilberthouse.org. That's gilberthouse.org. My new book with uh, Josh Peck, The Day the Earth Stands Still, still considered a new release at Amazon and still hanging in among the top three new releases in the science and religion category, which is really remarkable because the guy holding the number one spot, Michael Shermer, uh, the guy who publishes Skeptic Magazine, is much better known than we are. So we are we are honored and pleased that uh, the book appears to be very well received the day the earth stands still if you got a copy even if you bought it from skywatch tv we would sure appreciate a review at amazon because uh, while we're delighted and honored that you would choose to um in- invest in-, in this book uh, we would like for people already not already in the choir to hear about this because there are a lot of people being deceived into a virtual religion worshiping et or at least turning to extraterrestrials or what they think are extraterrestrials that's the key point they what they think are extraterrestrials for answers to questions that we have in the bible where do we come from why are we here and what happens to us when we die we've got those answers and yet a lot of people millions tens of millions are turning to et for those answers they're being deceived and this book addresses this and shows from pretty clear evidence, I think, how there is a direct link from the occult realm to the modern ancient astronaut theory, the idea that the gods of the ancient world were nothing more than visitors from other worlds. Well, that is a lie from the pit of you-know-where. Along with that, by the way, if you go to the Skywatch TV store to buy the hard copy, which is what we recommend, um, you get Josh's new book, Unraveling the Multiverse, which is the uh, remastered, version, if you will, of his first two books, Cherubim Chariots and uh, Quantum Creation, plus Dr. Michael Heiser's excellent, highly recommended novels. Let me put these in front of my face, The Facade and The Portent. All of those, plus the uh, five DVDs of interviews, plus a bunch of other free stuff, uh, about $300 worth of stuff all together if you bought it separately for under 40 bucks. So that's the way to do it. Um, if you want a an electronic copy, if you want to read it on your Kindle, Amazon has the Kindle edition. That is officially available now at Amazon, so you can go to Amazon.com to get the Kindle edition of The Day the Earth Stands Still. But if you're going to buy the hard copy, really recommend you go to the Skywatch TV store. Um, the easiest way to find the link is go to the book's website. The official website for the book is officialdisclosure.com, officialdisclosure.com. So um, we got all of that. We got, um, what else? Uh uh, well, I guess that's it for now. we got some other things coming up, our, our tour of Israel. If you're still interested, or if you're interested, there's still a few slots available for the Year 70 Tour of Israel with Dr. Michael Heiser, Sharon, and me. May 6th through the 16th, we'll be touring um, Israel. And then if you take the extension to that tour, a three-day extension, um, Jordan as well, which means a tour of Petra. And this is going to be a once-in-a-lifetime thing because we will be in Jerusalem on the 70th anniversary of of Israel's independence and part of that celebration once in a lifetime. If you want more information, go to LipkinTours.com, L-I-P-K-I-N Tours.com, and look for the Year 70 Tour of Israel link. Still just a few slots available for that, but we would love to have you along for that ride. And then following that, still a couple of slots open for the True Legends Expedition to Rome and Sardinia. Steve Quayle, Timothy Alberino, Sharon K. Gilbert, Derek P. Gilbert. Um, 
we'll see the historical sites of Rome and the archaeological sites of Sardinia, which relate to the Amorites, the Canaanites, their worship of the old giants, the giants of old, yep. Yeah. And this will all be part of uh, the research that I'm doing for my forthcoming book, which should be out all things, you know, God willing, um, by August. I, I figure if I keep talking about this enough, um, I will apply enough pressure to myself to make sure that I get it done on time. It's worked twice already, so hopefully it'll work again this time. So um, if you want information on the True Legends expedition to Rome and Sardinia, G-E-N-S-I-X, Gen6.com. Uh, go there also for information about the forthcoming True Legends uh, conference coming to Branson in September. This will be on the transhumanism movement, transhumanism and the hybrid age, the theme of the conference. Sharon will be one of the featured speakers, along with Steve Quayle, Tom Horn, Timothy Alberino, Dr. Hugo DeGaris, one of the world's leading researchers into artificial intelligence. Looking forward to meeting him face to face. I've interviewed him a couple of times, but look forward to meeting him face to face. Um, this is going to be a big deal because transhumanism, like the UFO phenomenon, a new sci-fi religion for the 21st century. And it's based on the same old lie. Ye shall be as gods. So check that out at gen6.com. A view from the bunker. Uh, we appreciate you giving us a review, whether it's at iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, or anywhere else you find us. Give us a thumbs up at uh, YouTube and share the video. If you're watching this at YouTube, share the video around so that uh, people, again, outside the choir might hear some of this uh, stuff that'll shake up the worldview just a little bit. That's our goal. And uh, remember that this is a production of Gilbert House, released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license. The opening theme is by Kevin McLeod. His website, www.incompetech.com. And the announcer is DC Good. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is A View from the Bunker.